Hi everyone, my name is Isaac. I'm a software engineer here at OpenBCI. And today I'll be showing you guys how to set up and use the new EMG joystick widget in the OpenBCI GUI. This is the same joystick we used to provide Christian Byerlin control of a drone in OpenBCI's 2023 TED Talk. To get started, we're gonna be referencing the Neurofly Toolkit doc, which goes into more detail on how to set up and use the EMG joystick. The materials required, you'll need an OpenBCI board, you'll need electrodes and electrode cables, and then lastly, you'll need to install the OpenBCI GUI and make sure it's version 5.2.0 or later because this is when the EMG joystick got added. So if you go ahead and click here, this will pull up the releases page for the GUI. And then since I'm using Windows, I'm gonna install the Windows zip file. And once that's done installing, you can go ahead and extract this folder to the location of your choice. So after you've extracted the folder, go ahead and open it. And we'll be running the OpenBCI GUI executable. If this is your first time running it, right click and click run as administrator. This will avoid any permission issues with the GUI. And so today I'll be using a Cyton. So take your Cyton dongle and plug it into a USB port on your computer. If you're using a Ganglion, do the same with your Ganglion dongle. Plug that in. And on your Cyton, you'll want to flip the switch to PC mode and you'll see a blue light turn on. And then from the GUI, click on Cyton, Serial, and either use Auto Connect or you can manually choose from this menu. So then click Start Session. And so for this tutorial, you'll want to be using the EMG joystick widget and the networking widget to stream out a UDP stream of the EMG joystick values. So we'll come back to this later. Next, I wanna show you guys how to set up the EMG electrodes and how to connect them to your board. So we'll go over that next and then come back to the GUI. To get started with EMG, we can reference the EMG Getting Started tutorial, which is linked here in the Neurofly Toolkit doc. This goes into detail on how to get set up with EMG using both the Cyton and Ganglion board. Um, at a high level, what we need is four channels of EMG input to have full control of the EMG joystick. And so each channel, you need both a positive and negative electrode, and the muscle activity is measured between the two. So for four channels, we need eight electrodes, and we also need one more electrode plugged into the bias pin. The bias pin eliminates common mode noise and will make your data cleaner less likely to have false positives. Um, and next, I'll show you guys how to plug these electrodes into the Cyton pins and how to get the electrodes connected to your body. The setup I'll be using to control the joystick that works best for me is I'm gonna put channel one on my right forearm and channel two on my left forearm. So if I flex my forearm, that will activate these channels. That will be the X axis of the joystick. And then I'm gonna put one channel on my right calf and one on my left calf. So channels three and four to move the Y axis. So you guys can see on the Cyton here, it's labeled, uh, channel one is labeled N1P. So you need both a positive and negative electrode. And here I have these cables. I'll plug in one to the top pin, which is positive, one to the negative. And so that means the blue and green cables are connected to channel one. Um, and then we're gonna do the same for uh, all four channels. So plug them into N2P, N3P, and N4P. After you've got all four channels plugged in, the next thing we need to do is plug in one more cable into the bottom bias pin. So the bo bottom bias is labeled bias here on the top. And so I'm gonna plug in this cable into the bottom bias. So act as the ground. Now after the bias is plugged in, 
we'll need to attach these snap electrodes to each one of these cables. So go ahead and just snap it on like that for each one. Now, after you've got all of these snap electrodes connected, um, I'll show you guys how to connect to your muscles. So I'm gonna use the right forearm. Remember, the blue and green cables are the ones I plugged into channel one. So you're gonna remove the sticky tape and I'm gonna measure across my forearm. So I'm gonna put one, I'm trying to measure across the muscle. So I'll put one electrode here. It does not matter which order, if you do positive or negative on the bottom or top of the muscle. And then the second, I will connect to the top of my forearm here. So you guys can see if I flex, that should get picked up by channel one. And then I'm going to do the same for the left forearm. And then I'm also going to put channels three and four on my calves. So go ahead and find which muscle groups work best for you. Um, you might have to do some trial and error with the GUI running to see which uh, muscle groups you can activate the best consistently. Um, OK, so after we get the electrodes connected, I'll show you guys how this looks in the GUI. The last thing I forgot to mention is where to put the bias. So the bias should be attached to a bony part of your body where there is not much muscle activity. So I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my elbow like that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's attached to my elbow. Um, that's where I find works the best for me. Now that the electrodes are connected, we can come back to the GUI and see how the data looks. So if we click Start Stream, we'll notice that channels one through four are actually picking up heartbeats. And so what we need to do, since we aren't using the SRV2 pin, is stop the stream and go to hardware settings, and then disable SRV2 for channels one through four, and then click send to send this to the board. This can take a second. So hardware settings were sent to the board. We'll go back to time series and start the stream again. Um, you'll notice that the channels look much cleaner now. And on the top right here, we can see the EMG joystick widget. So channel one is mapped to negative X, channel two to positive X, channel three to positive Y, and channel four to negative Y. And if you want to change which channel affects which direction, you can use these drop down menus to change that. Um, so if I flex my right forearm, we should see activation negative X. Left forearm is positive X, right calf is positive Y, and then left calf is negative Y. But as you can see, this is not working perfectly right now. There's a lot of false positives coming through. And the way to fix that is with the EMG settings tab, which is located right here. And we can see that there's a whole bunch of parameters for each channel. And there's a further description on each parameter in the NeuroFly Toolkit doc. Um, but the ones that I usually adjust to avoid false positives are the creep minus and the low limit. So the creep minus, if I change this to 0.98, what it will do is it will allow less signal through. So there's less false positives, but it's also harder to activate the button. So this is too low of a value because I can't even activate negative X right now. So if I change this, let's try 0.99. Um, this seems to be working pretty well. I can activate it, and there's going to be less false positives. And then the other one is low limit. So low limit, this is the lowest value, lowest microvolt value needed to even activate the button at all. So if this is higher, it allows for even less false positives. So each person is different, and you're going to need to play around to see which settings work best for you. Um, I'll be back. I'm going to adjust all these settings to what works for me. OK, I found the settings that work best for me. Once you find the settings that work for you, go ahead and click the Save button here. And I'm going to use the default name. Um, so if you want to start a new session and not have to manually input all the parameters again, you can go ahead and click the Load button and select the file you just saved. Now I can show you guys how I have better control over the joystick. So 
If I flex my right forearm, go negative x, go positive x, positive y, negative y. Say I want to go forward to the right, forward to the left, backwards right, backwards left. So as you guys can see, I have good control over the joystick now after adjusting these parameters. Next, we want to stream out this EMG joystick uh, data. So on the bottom right here is the networking widget. And here for the data type, we want to select EMG joystick and then start data stream. So this will create a UDP stream of the EMG joystick X and Y values. And then we can catch this UDP stream in the application of our choosing. So for our use case, we used EMG joystick to control a drone, but you guys can use it for whatever you guys choose to use it for. Um, and next I'll show you guys how to catch this stream and use it in your project. This is a C-sharp file we use to read in the EMG joystick packet data into our drone application. So elsewhere in the project, we create a UDP streamer in order to catch the UDP stream we create in the GUI. And then this is the packet format. So there's a type field and a data field. Within the data field, there's an X and Y value. So the X is the X axis from the joystick and the Y is the Y axis from the joystick. And they both range between negative one and one. And then this is what a real packet might look like with real values. So this would be the X and this would be the Y. Um, first thing we do is check if the packet data length, if it's less than two, then we want to return because that means we're missing either the X axis or Y axis from the joystick. Then if that passes, we assign the zeroth index of data to a variable called EMG joystick X, and then the first index of data to EMG joystick Y. And after we have those, we can send those values to the drone in order to control it. Um, next, I will show you guys me controlling the drone using my muscles. I have one. I'm on my way.